Well, Wetlands Day has additional significance this year because of the recent adoption of the Global Biodiversity Framework, which includes targets for protecting and restoring wetlands. Many in the negotiations preferred a simpler expression of land and sea without reference to wetlands, and it's thanks to a determined coalition of NGOs, governments, political and indigenous leaders that understanding came that wetlands are not just another ecosystem type that's exceptionally important for biodiversity, but that bringing wetlands back in good condition is essential to safeguard all other ecosystems and to achieve a just and safe planet. Backing up the GBF and climate commitments, several science-based targets are now on the table, for example for freshwaters, rivers, mangroves and peatlands. Moving society into action on these is a bigger challenge, answering questions like where is wetland protection and restoration most needed and what's needed to achieve lasting ecological restoration. There's actually plenty of knowledge and experience around, but it's very fragmented. Wetlands International, for example, has led more than 30 significant wetland restoration projects, including 14 of the main wetland types since the year 2000. Most of these are at the landscape scale and with a long-term perspective, connecting restoration efforts with protection measures, as well as enabling more nature positive practices in production landscapes. But to achieve the global wetland restoration targets, we need significant shifts in governance, policies and investments. And the private sector needs to join the party in a big way. And for that, NGOs need to embrace and enable it. All of this is achievable if we intensify collaboration locally and globally. Wetlands International is ready to play its part in that. Thank you.